Cool. Hey, everybody. It is time for our live video today. What's up, Kick Hawk? Hey. I am Manny Cabrera. I'm the chief instructor and uh, president here at Sidekicks Martial Arts. And I'm here with our program director, Jessica Cabrera, who also happens to be my partner in life crime. I mean, crime, partner in life crime. It started out well and then... Partner in life crime, Jessica Cabrera. Um, you guys know her. She's my, uh, my spouse, my number one. I'm really excited to be with you guys tonight. So we're going to give you guys a couple seconds to jump on here with us. Um, so you can get more in the picture. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm only half in. I'm also watching on here so I can see if anybody comments so we can answer questions. Yeah, because uh, we the way we got the, the way we got the camera, we can't exactly see what you guys are saying unless we look on her. Really phone. should have done the forward facing camera. Well, you know what? It would have made all the stuff that you had up here look backwards, and so I kind of oh. just wanted to make it look normal. You got a little side bay on it. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So, you know, what we're on here today to talk about is going to be how to get the most out of uh, this next testing cycle. So, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we had uh, bell rank testing. I thought, and, and, and I hope you agree with me, I thought that we had a phenomenal uh, work done by all of our students. Mm -hmm. I thought they did really, really good. Um, you know, I got to tell you the truth. Sometimes I'm like, uh, you know, we go through the testing cycle like, Gosh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. <laughs> and then everybody shows up at testing and they look, you know, fantastic. And yeah. a, a lot of times I think that, you know, maybe we just put unrealistic thoughts on ourselves, you know, as to if we're doing a good job or, or what. It's a great, you know, chain. Uh, uh, testing is just as much of an evaluation of the students, you know, at testing for how they're doing in their skill sets. As much as it is for us as the, you know, I guess as the chief instructor, as management, mm -hmm. to evaluate mm -hmm. how our curriculum is doing, how our teaching methods are going, um, you know, communication with our members. Because if we go through a testing and one or two people look great mm -hmm. or one or two people look bad, mm -hmm. um, you know, in my opinion, that's on the student. However, if everybody looks really good or everybody looks, you know, bad, then that's more or less on the instructor staff. Right. And so, you know, Jessica, I mean, you've known me since I was a kid. You know, I've been all over the country doing martial arts. And I've been to tons of schools, um, you know, and, and kind of, I, mean, I got to tell you the truth, it's kind of proven itself out every single time I've ever been anywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to see a little bit more of the testing yeah. than I did. So why don't you tell them kind of some of the observations that you made, uh, some of the things that you really kind of want students to maybe even just a couple tips, you know, to get students to work on, like sure. just answering up or anything like that. Sure, sure. Sure. Um, uh, like you said, after every testing, um, that we've ever done over all the years, all the instructors usually sit down and have a big powwow and look for trends. Um, because if there's a trend in overall what we're seeing, it usually is a good guidepost for us to know what needs adjusted when we're working in your classes. Um, one of the things that I noticed was, um, a um, maybe not quite as much confidence while doing the patterns um, as we would like to see. So um, let's make sure that if you have the opportunity to come to that Friday evening patterns class that you're coming or the Saturday morning classes. Saturday mornings are a great time to get caught up on anything that you might have missed during the week. Um, the patterns are all um, on video right on our uh, Fish Hawk membership page. Yeah, right here just, in, in this Facebook group. Mm -hmm, that we recorded the, the pin post. We recorded um, quite a while ago, Mr. Laparetta doing all the patterns, so it's always there for a reference. You can always hit us up and say, hey, um, can you remind me how this part of that part goes? Um, and then the other element, the crucial element, is practicing at home. Because the more repetition that you have, the more confident you're going to be. And let's face it, the whole point of testing is to put a little bit of pressure on our students and yeah. to see how they react to things under pressure. Um, and if you don't feel 100% confident in your pattern, that is going to show at testing. So you need to make sure that you're practicing enough at home that you feel 100% confident doing that pattern um, and you're not um, having to f constantly fight that temptation to look over at the person next to you and check that you're Absolutely. doing the right thing. Absolutely. You know, forms, you know, you mentioned the forms specifically, you know, forms 
are designed to simulate street fighting and defending, um, you know, and a lot of times against multiple points of attack, you know, mm -hmm. so they go forward, they go backwards, there's hits to the side, um, you know, and, and the ultimate goal of it is for them to kind of just demonstrate to us, like, hey, do you have that ability to identify what is coming at you as well as being able to attack and defend against it? Right. You know, and I 100% I agree. Having that, developing that confidence is, is key. Um, so, you know, if, if it's supposed to simulate street fighting and defending, and if you're working with a, you know, a young one at home, you know, what you want to kind of do is like, I always use the analogy of, hey, if you are, you know, the clone troopers who are fighting the droids or the Jedi fighting the droids or whatever it is, um, and you do your move like this, is that going to defeat, mm -hmm. you know, the droid? If you're not using the force. Apparently, apparently you can wave your hand and take out puns of them. Um, I walked into that one before. This is not the army you're Yeah, this is not the droid army you want. But, um, you know, it, it just kind of, it comes to intention a lot mm -hmm. of times. And, you know, that in itself is a life skill, you know, right. for kids to learn um, in, in developing that process. So what else did you see? Because, I mean, that sounds pretty cool. Something, something you really liked. I mean, I, cause um, I'm all about, I'm all about, let's, we, we want to keep doing the right things. Absolutely. I was really impressed with all of the self-defense segments in every testing. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm uh, if you are joining us just now, we are talking about uh, uh, kind of some of our observations from testing, as well as how to get the most out of testing. Uh, just drop us, you know, if you got any questions or anything, just drop it right down in the, uh, I know we got a second person, just drop <laughs> it. No, funny you should mention that. The first question we have is, what if you had to fight Anakin and Darth Vader at the same time? I'm well, pretty sure the only person that's ever had to do that is Luke, <clears throat> because you can make the argument that he was physically battling one and psychologically battling the other one and if you want to go full nerd I'm your girl but maybe this is maybe not the moment because I can see it well no no I think <laughs> I think that that's I think that's great uh, the thing that I would jump into um, because this is pretty much gonna break with the Star Wars universe oh, no. is now you're gonna go into maybe a multiverse theory you oh, know boy. so you got Darth from one universe and maybe you know Anakin maybe Anakin did not in fact break towards the dark side stayed with the light but still struggled and ended up in some sort of battle royale um i hope that that gets you see i thought i was going full nerd and you took it to the next level oh, level up oh listen if level you're up. listen tom that was tom Lefebvre. yeah mm -hmm. tom it's good to see you on here man listen if you are watching star trek discovery then you un this this new series that's out then you understand fully where we're going with that concept <laughs> um if not then uh i don't want to spoil it for everyone but you can message me and we'll talk about it later yep awesome yeah so what, tell me about self-defense. Tell me what it is that I, you saw. I was really impressed with the intensity that everybody showed that. It was like the intensity that everybody maybe got a little too nervous for in the patterns. It all came out there in the self-defense. I could tell what the students love and what they're really enthusiastic about. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I got kneed in the stomach or kicked in the knee on Monday. It was fantastic. It was really great. I was so proud of all of you guys for doing that on Monday. You did a really great job. Well, that's cool. Ultimately, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. And, and you know what? Tom being on here reminded me. I think the most spectacular moment of all of the testings on all of the days was actually Tom's son, Cole, when he had to do his board break. It was fantastic. He had to do um, break a black level board to a test out of his red belt. And um, he tried it, and he tried it a couple times. Now, we'd worked on class. I'd worked with him in class on it before, and... We'd really, you know, he'd been working really hard, and I could tell he'd put a lot of work and thought into it. And um, he did so well, and he took him a couple of tries, and that first couple of tries, it didn't seem like I was going to do it. And then he remembered that he had to key up. And that key up is what did it. It was magic, and it broke. he broke through that board like butter, and it was maybe my favorite moment of any of the testings on Monday. It was great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, you know the great thing... I you know, the thing I've always loved about, you know, martial arts is that every instance, there's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, there's perseverance, there's grit, there's, you know, overcoming challenges, you know, all of those things that make him successful at breaking a board are also those things that make, you know, in this instance, Cole or another student that may encounter and do the same thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, makes them going to be successful at other things in life, you know? And I mean, it's kind of like we, we, with children, you know, that thing about your kid that really annoys you is probably going to be the thing that really makes them successful. Let's hope. You know, um, so if you got a kid that argues with you, chances are they're going to be a great negotiator or salesperson or attorney or something. I'm hoping that that you know? sense of complete moral conviction, I'm hoping that pans out when he's an adult. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. 
but um but yeah that's that's terrific so tell me uh any other observations for testing before we get in kind of how to maximize like now that we you know once you get they get their new belts next week um you know probably towards the second half of the week mm -hmm. um what you know before we get into that any, anything sure. else you want to say about testing um no i i was really i i got to be on the floor for all almost all the testings on monday and i was really pleasantly impressed i was you know like you i think all of the instructors are a little bit nervous when it comes to watching testing because we feel like it's a report card for us too um and i was Absolutely. i was really pleased i was really pleased well you know as we uh, truth be told it, it i mean it is definitely more of a you know as we grow you know into multiple locations you know we have a location in wesley chapel you know uh, we're going to begin actually videotaping testings cool. so that us back here at you know, corporate or headquarters or me as a chief instructor, I can quality check what's going. I mean, because mm -hmm. eventually I may not be able to get to all the testings, you know? And so I'm, uh, I'm excited about that part, but yeah, it is, it, I mean, it is a report card for us because we yeah. always evaluate. And I would get, what would, if you had to give the students and instructors oh, for gosh. this testing, if you had to give them a letter grade, A, B, C, D, hopefully not an F. <laughs> Uh, we um, probably never, probably never tell you. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm always really hesitant uh, um, to give myself or the instruction staff an A because I always feel like we have. I, I always want to. I want to feel like we have that room to grow. Like I want to feel like we need to push that little bit further. So I would say solid B plus because there's always a little bit further and harder that we can push to make things a better experience for. For you guys, for our students, our members. So maybe maybe, maybe A minus because you know. All right, fine. I'll give it the. You know, I didn't get great grades. I didn't always get great grades in school. So I, you know, I want to. You need the ego. In, in, in second fun. in my in my it. career, I want to I want to do well. You know. That's well, that's cool. You know, obviously, we can always increase the parameters of what constitutes an A once we get to the A. You know, but that's that's cool. All right. Yes, <laughs> you're going full nerd again. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so switching gears, uh, let's go into. Talking about this next testing cycle, um, you know, for us here at Sidekicks, we kind of, you know, uh, uh, this powerful this month's powerful word has been goal setting. Awesome. Um, and you know, goal setting is you know uh, setting something out in the future, going out and then achieving it. You know, all of those kinds of things are um, you know really important things to teach children. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the cool thing though is that we all we, we have a mechanism within. Our martial arts system mm -hmm. that helps kids to learn goal setting um, and it was kind of one of those things that uh, we backed into you know what I mean and because martial arts for the you know hundreds of years that, that people practice martial arts for like warfare and saving their life you right. know and not getting their head chopped off or, or whatever guerrilla rebellions and whatnot yeah yeah you know there was no belt system Imagine that. Yeah, there's no, there was no belt system. Not dying was your belt system. Hey, you win. Yeah, and it, and and <laughs> so this is this is going, you know, going off kind of on a little bit of a tangent, but trust me, it, it, it's it's going to be valid. It was not until the early 1900s when a guy named Jigoro Kano, who is the founder of the martial art of judo. In fact, they call him O Sensei. You know, he he was uh, a, a very very important luminary. All martial arts um, system styles have much respect for this guy because mm -hmm. he's one of the OGs of martial arts. <laughs> one of the OGs. OGs, yeah. Arts. Well, you know, in Taekwondo, we call them pioneers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. That's cool. But he was the first person to create any kind of ranking system. And the purpose of the ranking system was not to give kids goals. Right. But it was to tell the instructor what the progress the student had made. Right. Because judo blew up. Jiu-jitsu, which is what judo uh, derives from, is a very difficult system, you mm -hmm. know, originally. And and even like BJ, you know, they're very, very difficult martial arts. Right. They require 15 years to become a black belt. Right. You know? However, judo was kind of a streamlined... Hi, Juliet. You know, judo was kind of a streamlined version uh, of, of, you know, jiu-jitsu. It, it, had, had, it had simpler throws. Mm -hmm. And it became very popular very fast. Right. So they were teaching lots of people. And that's right. how the belt system kind of originated... Um, and then over time, you know, when martial arts came to the America and became really, really popular in the 80s, mm -hmm. and kids got involved because, you know, the Karate Kid, um, it became one of those things where it became all about this goal-setting process. Right. 
And so the great thing about it, and this is how we're kind of bringing it back, is that we have this long-term goal setting process. Right. Um, and so long-term goal would be? Black belt. Black belt. And so we always hold this idea of black belt excellence at black belt as a standard mm -hmm. because it's what you're trying to be at some point in the future. In fact, we're launching the Mastery Academy with our black belts, you know, so they can even level up in that instance. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have intermediate goals, which represent all of the colored belts, okay. you know. And then because we got to have steps, we got to clearly define here this how we're going to get to that long term goal. Mm -hmm. And then within each of those belts, we have our eight stripes. Right. And all eight of those stripes represent these are the benchmarks that I need in order to get to that next intermediate goal. Right. So inside of our martial art, it teaches about goal setting. Right. I mean, when we talk about giving out stripes in class, um, you know, I, I tell parents and I tell kids that are nervous about testing, look, guys, we want you to pass. We want you to pass your belt exam. And that's why we give you stripes. That's why you earn the stripes ahead of time. Because if you haven't earned your stripes, then you haven't shown us what you need in order to test. But if you've earned those stripes, you've already shown us everything that you need in order to pass your test. That's why we give the stripes out. But the secondary benefit is it gives you eight points, as a kid particularly, eight um, affirmations that say, hey, I am moving towards my mid-range goal. And then those mid-range goals all kind of stack up to like a long-term goal. And it works out to be a system that teaches kids how to reach big, hairy, audacious goals one step at a time, one stripe at a time. It's the magic of electrical tape, you guys. Yeah, well, I mean, it just, it was crazy because the whole purpose, we, stripes was another thing. In fact, um, my instructor, who, who have you guys know him, he's also my dad, Master Cabrera. Uh, was oh, one him. Of the, yeah, oh, him. Uh, you know, <laughs> when we're not here, I call him dad. Uh, giving him hell since the, you know 1983. Um, don't 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 steal my identity. Um, but it, it was it was one of those things where we just did it because we wanted to know what to teach people. Right. You know what I mean? Like we just we didn't want to spend ten minutes of class trying to figure out what someone needed to learn. Mm -hmm. But it was nuts. Like you know, like it was crazy. People were showing up, hey, Mr. Cabrera, can I, you know, Mr., can I get my next stripe? And it turned into this really big goal setting thing. So what did we do? We realized we had a really good thing going on. We pivoted on it and we, we, we rolled with it. And that's, that's really, you know, that, that's the whole story of it. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that these kids, you know, are setting goals. So like, how can they, how can parents parlay that entire thing mm -hmm. at home to help kids Learn to ride a bike. Learn, you know, anything else that they need, that they need to learn. Sure. Um, I was actually, it kind of dovetails into a video that I was going to shoot later in the week um, to share with you guys. But um, it, it reminds me of a conversation that I was having with some uh, high school kids that we were teaching uh, several years ago um, about somebody who had just reacted and reacted wrongly. And they say, well, what do you do when you have that moment where you're just reacting because when you're reacting, you're not making choices. You're just you're just doing, right? Well, the way that you um, train your reactions in life is exactly the same way you train your reactions in the martial arts. If you're defending yourself, you're not thinking. You're just reacting, and you're going to react the way that you've trained, right? If I've trained how to do a particular self-defense te technique thousands and thousands of times, then when I need it, I'm going to react doing that self-defense technique. So in life. I want to react with the thing, I'm going to react with the things that I've been putting into uh, myself. Have I been filling myself with positive uh, people? Have I been filling my brain with uplifting and informative information? Have I been surrounding myself with those positive influences and going out and practicing those positive things during the day? Have I been practicing uh, acts of kindness? Have I been devoting myself to my studies? Have I been developing in those small disciplined ways those things that are going to influence the person that I am in my core so that when I need to react to something I'm going to react as the person I want to be instead of just the person that goes ah! and just does the first thing that pops out right so it's about not just reacting and training yourself to react in a certain way in the martial arts but in your life too right so parents are you to, you know, ask your kids, sit down and have that conversation. 
are you training yourself to be the kind of person that you want to be in those gut check grit moments? Are you training in your life the same way that you're training in your martial arts class? Positive voices, positive information, putting into practice all those things that you really want to be most in the times when it's hard. That's fantastic. You, that's fantastic. Our kids are so lucky to have you as their mom. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes I lose my cool completely because I find six pairs of socks on the floor. It's not all. It's not all Facebook videos. Yeah, well, that's true. So if you're just joining us, you know, you want to comment or have a question for us, just drop it in the in the comment section. We're talking about um, how to get the most out of this next testing cycle. We just had testing. Uh, we kind of you know you can go back and watch the beginning of this. We kind of talked a little bit about. What we thought about the testing, what we think needs, you know, it's a little bit more improvement. Um, and then, you know, if you got a question, like I said, we want to talk to you, want to interact, just drop it down in the comments. We got anything? Uh, Mrs. Alva Sabanem says, play as you practice, practice as you play. And that's absolutely right. That's, that's exactly fantastic. It. So, uh, Miss uh, uh, Master Alvis, she is a phenomenal instructor, phenomenal friend um, who lives in Coral Springs. And I uh, appreciate you being on the call and watching with us today. So that's, that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into a couple tips, like how to get the most out of this next testing cycle. Um, that's our kids I hear. <laughs> they're supposed to be watching Spider-Man. I think they're having a lightsaber battle in the hallway, though. It's all coming back around to Star Wars again. Yeah. Um, anyways, so here's the first thing. You know, we, we tested this week. Next week, they're going to get promoted to their mm -hmm. new belts. Um, we're starting a new testing cycle beginning on Monday. Um, the very, very first thing that I want to emphasize, and, and this is critical, is that consistency is always going to be better than frequency. Right. You know, um, you got to be here. That's the number one thing. We cannot, um, you know, we cannot just download, like in the Matrix, you know, martial arts into your kid's brain or any of the lessons or any of the, you know, or help them achieve the results that you kind of brought them to us for um, if they're not, pardon me, being consistent with coming to class. It's the same thing we were just talking about. You yeah. can't you can't just force a reaction. It's got to be a result of consistent practice, right? Yeah, like I said, consistency trumps frequency, and that's even better. Is that you know uh, that you know if you can only come you know two times a week, that's better than coming five times in one week, coming one time the following week, three times the following week, skipping two weeks, you know, and then even so. Once you've earned your stripes, like let's say that you you know you your your kid is you know for this particular cycle hits a pretty good groove and earns their stripes in the first two months of the testing cycle, that last month is critical mm -hmm. to them really owning the lessons, you know, getting better, uh, 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 and and really internalizing all of the things that they've been being taught. Right. So you got to be here. That's like always the number one. You got to be here. Um, our preference minimum of two times. Three times is pretty good. Right. Like, if you're feeling really good, coming five times is fine. But remember that the, the consistency is better than frequency. Right. Um, just, you got to manage sometimes that too much of a good thing is still too much of a good thing. Right. But like I said, two, three times, probably about the right amount of time. Um, so that's my that's my first number one critical, how do you, you got to actually, like, consume the lessons that we're doing. Yep. What would you say is another thing that they need to, you know, to get the most out of martial arts? Um, don't cherry pick your classes. That means if you're really into self-defense, don't only come when you know that we're covering self-defense or don't only come when you know we're sparring or don't only come to patterns class because we're looking to create well-rounded black belts and well-rounded students. So if that thing that makes you uncomfortable makes you uncomfortable, that should be the thing that you're chasing the hardest. Yeah, you know, for a long time, I actually just, I published... And I may go back to doing it, but I, you know, for a long time I published like, okay, for this part of the week, this, these are the skills that we're covering. Mm -hmm. This part of the week, these are the skills that we're covering. And I always worry though that it's like when you wake up or you, before you go to bed tonight at night and you go and you look at the CrossFit workout or something <laughs> like that, and you're like, oh heck, we're running, I am out. Like, and, and you cherry, you know, and you sandbag that class, you know. Right. Um, you know, I don't want kids to. Hi, bud. I don't want kids to, or, or you know, to, to not come because that's the lessons that they got to get. It's a hundred percent. I absolutely agree with it. Yeah. Um, the the next thing that I would really say is is crucial is you as the parent play a vital role in this entire ecosystem. True. If you're coming two or three times a week, um, if you're coming twice a week, if your child is in our early skills class, 
they spend an hour with us. That's 30 minutes in each class. They spend an hour with us. If they're in our, our any of our other classes, then they're spending about an hour and a half with us and they're coming twice a week. Mm -hmm. So if you have 45 times two is mm -hmm. an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're spending about an hour and a half with us. They're with you the all the other hours, you know? And so obviously encouraging them to practice is great, but even more so you being their number one supporter. Right. And their number one, you know, cheerleader is probably just as important. So rather than sitting on the, the sidelines watching the class, um, which is great, we love you coming, but, and then when you get in the car, you know, you start saying, hey, you should have done this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and being critical, all we really want from you in order to help bolster what we're teaching, you know, to back up what we're teaching is, is number one, what was your favorite thing in class? What was the, you know, what did you enjoy the most? What did you find challenging? Mm -hmm. How and then and asking them, you know, let him put him a little bit in the driver's seat, you know, especially if they're at that seven, eight, nine year old range. Um, you know, what do you think you sh could do over the next day or so? Practice a couple minutes that's going to help get you better at that for next time, you know. Right. And so, being more of a supporter and guide rather than just kind of hammering in on all of the things that they did wrong or, you know, maybe because they're, you know, they're seven and maybe they were a little bit vocal in class or, pardon me, whatever the, the situation is, that will only damage them as opposed to helping, which is always what our atten in in intention is as parents. Well, if, you, if you're bringing them to class, it's obviously something that you want them to learn. We right. all want them to learn focus. We all want them to learn discipline. We all want them to learn the things that they're doing here. But if the kid sort of subconsciously knows that they're going to get criticized every time they get done with their class, all of a sudden it's going to be less fun and less exciting to come to class. Absolutely. So, you know, that's kind of, that's, you know, that's kind of the, the, the main thing. And the, kind of the next, you know, the next, he's, one of our kids is trying, to, is trying to sneak in. He's making finger puppets. Making finger puppets. Hey, bud, go on now. We're, we're busy right this second. Man, I really, I had that next point. And now, and it's, is, gone. now it's gone. Um, but, you know, you want to always, you know, when you bring your child, trust, and this is the point, trust the process. You know, um, you know, I, I, I love all of the, all the parents that come to our program. I love, you know, they're, they're well-intentioned um, and, Sometimes, like let's say that you have a younger child, sometimes we're going to allow certain behaviors in the class mm -hmm. that fit within the range of what an expected behavior for a child is. We might overlook some things. Nobody expects military precision and discipline from a five-year-old. It's, it's just not the way I, they're built. I don't even really expect military precision necessarily from an eight-year-old. I think they're on the road. Right. You know, but I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily expect, I got my five-year-old right here trying to sneak in when he's supposed to be watching Spider-Man. Um, you know, so let the instructors, you know, they're not, not paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. They're just choosing to see what's right with your kid as opposed to always hammering in on what's wrong in that one particular situation. So there's different techniques that we use if we need to corral behavior, you know, once it starts to get a little bit out of bounds, but all of our staff, all of our team have been specifically um, coached mm -hmm. and, and practiced at helping children to excel physically, intellectually, emotionally, socially, um, you know, every step of the way through every one of these age groups until they reach adulthood. And the fact of the matter is um, your entire staff here at Sidekicks has either been teaching long enough that I have and you have taught small children who have grown all the way up. You know, we taught most of our current instruction staff when they were very young children, or our current instruction staff were very young children and have grown up in the martial arts. And the fact is, we've all been doing this long enough to know long term those things that are gonna pan out. And it's all gonna be okay. And I know, because I have three kids myself, that it can be stressful to be the parent. All of those things that I spent years before I had kids reassuring other parents, it's normal, it's fine, they're gonna grow out of this, it's totally normal for a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, whatever. I sit and watch my own kids take class and I'm like, because it's hard when you're the parent of that kid to, be, to keep your patience and your perspective. But trust us, 
We've been doing this a long time. And your kid is totally normal, I promise. Yeah. You know, in fact, I always like to assure parents, you know, um, you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. Others have gone through this before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we found is, is it, it is, I think it's martial arts trusting this process, but this is kind of just some parenting, you know, life advice. Chances are your kid's going to turn out okay, no matter how much you feel like you're messing up. I still kind of got my fingers crossed on that one. Yeah. Ours are a process. That's awesome. Do we have any uh, comments or anything that, you know, or, or questions before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I think we're just, we're getting some awesome comments, but not questions so um. cool well i think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up uh obviously our kids uh are turning into pumpkins and it's time to get them home yep um i really want to say that i appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and spend some of your time with us come on come here buddy you know um <laughs> i gotta say it's a blessing every single day that we get the chance to uh teach your kids martial arts and you know it, and honestly you know because i grew up doing martial arts since i was younger than, than gabe here um quite literally giving them something, a piece of part of what makes me who I am as a person. And I gotta tell you, I'll never take that lightly. Um, and I'll always make sure that, you know, the vision that we're leading our staff and our instructors with Thanks. will always, um, you know, uh, instill that and pass that along, you know, with care and diligence and love. And ultimately love is the, the most important part of it. Yeah. Um, so uh, on behalf of myself, Mrs. Cabrera, and Gabe. And Gabe. <laughs> Say hi to everybody on Facebook. Everybody. Hi. <laughs> I want you guys to have a, a, a great rest of your Wednesday evening. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Make right. it a powerful day, guys. <laughs> Let's go hit the button, Gabe. Hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs>